a video game based on a largely forgettable movie, which is originally loosely based on a book, almost has no right to be this good. World War Z is a damn good co-op shooter, which follows a very similar mould to the infamous Left 4 Dead series. I imagine the original pitch for the game in the offices of developer Saber Interactive went something like this. Right, guys, if Valve isn't going to make Left 4 Dead 3, then we bloody well will instead. And so they did. World War Z borrows a hell of a lot from the Left 4 Dead franchise, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. This third person co-op focused shooter features 11 missions, 19 weapons, 5 different difficulty settings, and plenty, I mean plenty, of zombies. Taking you from New York to Jerusalem, Moscow, and even Tokyo, there's more than enough environmental variation on offer here, and it all looks pretty damn nice too, which always helps. You and three others will battle through the game's missions facing hordes of zombies on the way whilst completing various objectives. Whether it's holding out specific locations or pushing your way through the game's zones, all whilst various special zombies appear to attempt to make your time a little more interesting, also known as difficult, such as tanky bulls, pouncing lurkers or toxic cloud delivering hazmats. Enemy and item spawns are mixed up and randomised by the game's AI, which varies in generosity based on the difficulty option that you select. Harder difficulties see supplies and medkits being far more rare, forcing players to play smarter. Sound familiar? Where World War Z does things a little bit differently, however, is in the fairly extensive progression system wrapped around the game's six different classes – Gunslinger, Hellraiser, Medic, Fixer, Slasher and Exterminator. Each focuses on different playstyles of gameplay, with Slasher offering various melee improvements, Fixer offering ammo packs, and the Medic having various health related bonuses, obviously. After each match you'll increase your XP with that class and earn a currency to spend on the game's massive amount of unlocks. Over time you're able to unlock and purchase, in game that is, around 30 passive perk skill choices per class. You'll have to pick and choose too, with only one perk allowed to be active at a time per column, something the game could visualise a little better. The perks start off fairly basic but gradually become more important, such as staying with an improved weapon, or major improvements and adjustments to class skills. Not only that, but each of the game's 19 weapons have a wide range of attachment variations to unlock too, which improve their stats. Whilst the range of progression is impressive, the weapons generally felt fairly similar after upgrading, unless you throw in on a suppressor for example. Sure, they clearly offer a gradual edge over the enemies, but they don't really feel all that different. You know what I'm saying here. The game's gunplay in general could be better. It's solid, don't get me wrong, but it undoubtedly could be way more satisfying. In fact, much of it comes from the game's generally underwhelming audio mix throughout. Weapons aren't punchy enough, and something about the audio levels just feel a little off. Keep your head down and follow the fence. That's right where the Zeke are headed. What does feel great, however, is mowing down the mind-blowingly large number of zombies when a swarm arrives. Much like in the World War Z film, the zombies can come in huge, and I mean huge, numbers. Ginormous hordes of Zeds flowing like water over buildings towards your position, climbing on top of one another to scale walls and then attempt to reach you. Popping off explosives or unleashing a turret emplacement feels incredibly awesome. Enemies pop, explode and collapse in wonderful fashion. In fact, the game's hard tech is a real sight to behold, it never gets old. Whether it's hour 1 or hour 20, there's just nothing else quite like it. Until Days Gone arrives on PS4 in a few days, then there's something pretty similar, but it's still awesome, so let's just leave it at that, okay? There's even a range of competitive player versus player versus zombies modes thrown in for good measure too. There's multiple game types such as Swarm Deathmatch, Vaccine Hunt, Swarm Domination and plenty more. The largely traditional style multiplayer modes with zombies and occasional swarms spicing things up every so often. It's fine, and any end currency carries across to the main PvE portion of the game too, which is nice. Albeit with a slightly different class types, offering their own form of progression here. However, that's another bunch of progression for anyone keeping tabs. A decent distraction every now and again to round off the package, but I'd rather have preferred a mode where we could play as the zombies for example, just something a little bit more interesting. 
World War Z is far better than it has any right to be. In fact, I don't think many would have expected it to be this good. Fans of Left 4 Dead and games such as Vermintide will find a whole lot to like here. The game's missions and environments are varied enough too, with some standout locations such as Tokyo. It's not perfect though, I'd really like to see the whole feel of the movement improved. Right now it feels a little fast and floaty, with no mobility options like rolling to get out of a tough spot. Something which you really start to notice if you enter the PvPvZ modes. Also, the game's characters could have way more… character. Whilst the actual character design is pretty great, many look surprisingly detailed in fact. They have almost zero personality. There's the occasional bit of conversation here and there, but it's completely forgettable. Each episode and locale features a new set of four too, which helps for variety, but not for forming any kind of attachment. There's an animated style cutscene for each of the characters' backstory, and by completing a mission with each one, but that's about it. The agony is always there. But I've learned to live with it. The game features bots when playing offline, or to replace any levers too, and they're not so great. I mean, they follow you around and they shoot at things, but that's about it. They're mostly dumb and no real suitable replacement for a real player on higher difficulties. Although, they do tend to ignore the hundreds of zombies chasing after them to charge towards you if you're downed though, so that's kinda nice. Thanks, bot. Speaking of higher difficulties though, the game features 5 difficulties offering less supplies, higher friendly fire damage, increased damage taken, and stricter respawn restrictions. They also come with improved rewards though, adding a bunch of replay value. It'll take you tens of hours, if not hundreds, to max out all of the game's weapons and classes. There's plenty of value for money here if you're into it. World War Z is a whole lot of fun. It has great graphics, runs smoothly, has a beefy progression system, plenty of replay value, a solid amount of content, and a mind-blowingly awesome quantity of undead. It could be better though. There's numerous areas mentioned which could really use tightening up. Hopefully Developer Saber Interactive continues to improve and build upon what's included here, potentially taking this from a good game to an incredible one. Don't sleep on World War Z though, it is well worth a buy. Be sure to like, share and subscribe for more content like this.